does the timing of your intermittent fasting protocol impact your fat mass loss over time? Well, it turns out a recently published human clinical trial sought to investigate this very phenomenon to see and compare whether or not early time-restricted feeding is more effective than late time-restricted feeding when it comes to body composition changes. And what was really unique about this study is they had individuals exercise during their fasting protocol and window and so forth and compared that to individuals who just fasted and did not exercise. And as you know, they also had a control group. So here's the graphical abstract of this. And what we see here is early time restricted eating dash PA that is physical activity. So they had individuals embark over the course of this 12 week randomized controlled trial, uh, this intervention, they had individuals exercise Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at, you know, outside of their fasting window. And they also had individuals embark on a late time restricted feeding protocol paired with exercise. And then they just had individuals do a time restricted feeding protocol, which happened to be the late protocol, which the feeding window was between 12 and 8 p.m. So all of the time restricted feeding protocol windows were the same eight hours. But what we're comparing here is the control group versus just time restricted feeding versus time restricted feeding plus exercise early versus time restricted feeding plus exercise late. And I think this is really interesting. We're going to dive into these details. It's, it's pretty fascinating to see that the group that paired exercise plus time restricted eating, whether it was late time restricted feeding or early time restricted feeding, gained more strength, improved all aspects of body composition and lost more fat compared to just time restricted feeding alone. And this speaks to something we've talked a lot about, isn't it? And that is that exercise makes fasting more effective. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to convey this message to you all on these videos and podcasts and different seminars where I've spoken and all throughout the world that exercise is the one of the most effective ways to get more mileage out of your fasting. And finally, we have a clinical trial to support that effect because many people, including yourself, probably are excited about the prospect of enhancing autophagy when you start to fast. Well, it turns out that one of the best ways, in fact, far more effective than just fasting is exercise as a tool to increase autophagy. And lo and behold, we have this study finding that especially when you pair exercise with fasting, not only do you improve strength, not only did you, there were significant improvements in muscle mass gain, but also fat mass loss compared to the group who just fasted. So again, if you love fasting, you should be equally excited about exercise. Before we get into the details, let's look at the conclusion from this randomized clinical trial. The investigators say the integration of time-restricted eating with physical activity leads to greater improvements in body composition, lipid profiles, and physical performance with no significant differences between early time-restricted feeding or late time-restricted feeding plus exercise approaches. This combination strategy offers a promising solution in overweight or obese women. And really interesting. So in terms of the biomarkers that were changed more significantly, there was actually a greater reduction in liver enzymes in the early time restricted feeding group. And I think that's kind of interesting. So we know that the liver is a very important metabolic organ. And as you get more overweight and you start to gain body fat, um, your liver starts to build up in fat. It's called ectopic fat uh, deposition. And you start to see these liver enzymes creep up, AST, ALT, and GGT. And it turns out that early time restricted feeding led to a greater reduction in these different liver enzymes. Outside of that, uh, fat mass changes and LDL cholesterol levels and other things were pretty similar between the uh, early versus late time restricted feeding plus exercise groups. Now, what I think is interesting about this clinical trial is the fact that both groups that embarked on exercise, whether they were part of the early time restricted feeding protocol or the late time restricted feeding protocol, improved aspects of physical fitness. So this is really important because some of you like to go to the gym in the morning fasted and then start your, start your feeding window later in the day. Other people like myself, I like to start my day with food and then exercise later in the day. So it turns out that there really is no statistical significant benefit of one versus the other. It might just be personal preference. And they found that as long as the groups were exercising, they improved all aspects uh, of these objective tests that they uh, assessed in this protocol. This walking test, a bench press, a 30 second squat, crunch test, vertical jump, and leg extension. So all of the groups that had an exercise component improved compared to the group that didn't have an exercise component when it comes to physical fitness, which is to be expected. Now, 
I want to share with you the statistics because I think it's quite interesting. But first, I just want to say thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think in the comment section below about these awesome stats because it turns out that one group got significantly stronger uh, over the course of this intervention. And I want to share with you that momentarily. But since we're talking about exercise, I want to remind you that one tool that can help you during exercise, uh, it's a conditionally essential nutrient known as creatine. As you know, people, so many people now are talking about creatine. It seems like this is like the nutrient of 2024. Well, it turns out creatine has been around for a very long time. In fact, we've had it in our electrolytes over at Myoscience for now three years. 2.6 grams of the cleanest creatine on the market known as Creapure that is made manufactured in Germany, not China, like majority of the other creatine products on the market. And what makes the electrolyte sticks unique is you get creatine paired with electrolytes. It turns out to get creatine into your skeletal muscle, your heart, and your brain, you need electrolytes for the creatine transport protein. That's why we paired a really clean creatine with high quality electrolytes to help you not only support healthy hydration, but sports performance. There's over 1700 reviews over at myoscience.com. Check it out in the description below and see what other people are saying and how they're using this around exercise or sauna therapy to improve their health and their quality of life. You can save with the code podcast at checkout. Okay, so let's look at Figure three here. These are aspects of physical performance. It turns out that the group that participated in early time-restricted feeding had the greatest increase in both their squat and the six-minute walk test, as well as the crunch and the vertical jump. And so this is interesting because I know a lot of people, again, like to go and fast, do fasted exercise and fast all day and, and, and then, you know, have this big meal later and, and basically participate in a late time restricted feeding protocol. And I've pushed back uh, against that because I think it's good to have fuel in the, t in the tank when you go to exercise. So you have a really good exercise session so you can induce the adaptations. You can basically beat the muscle up a little bit more and have better post-exercise recovery by having nu nutrition there. And what we see here, and you can see the black bars are the time-restricted feeding group that, that ate between 8 and 4 p.m., comparing that to the white bars, which is the late time-restricted eating group that ate between 12 and 8 and you can see here between group differences were significantly better for in terms of squat strength by the objective amount of this 30 second squat test, six minute walk test, the crunch and, and the vertical jump. So again, I'm not just saying this to support my bias. I just think that it kind of makes sense. Like if you're going to have a good workout, you kind of want to have some fuel in the tank. You don't really want to focus on burning fat during your workout. In my opinion, you want to actually focus on exercises that are glycolytic in nature, sprints, interval training, weightlifting, all of that. And when you burn glucose during your exercise session, you naturally increase post-exercise fat oxidation. This is a phenomenon that we've talked a lot about. So in conclusion, the investigators say that the, the present study demonstrated that the early time-restricted feeding group plus exercise led to a selective loss of fat mass when comparing pre- and post-intervention results with, with no significant differences when comparing between groups. These results are consistent with those of Low et al., who also indicated that early time-restricted eating is an effective intervention to reduce fat mass. This effectiveness could be attributed to the alignment of the body's circadian rhythms with early time-restricted eating, which has been shown to improve metabolic processes and reduce the risk of metabolic disorders, as reported by Patterson et al., that paper by Patterson et al. is phenomenal, by the way. We've talked about it extensively on this podcast and channel. So definitely check that out. I'll put it in the description below here. Fasting has been proven to stimulate fat metabolism and promote the metabolic transition from glucose oxidation to fat oxidation when glycogen stores are depleted. This can be accompanied by an increase in lipolysis of adipose tissue and the release of free fatty acids and glycerol into the plasma. Mobilization and use of fatty acids in adipocytes, those are fat cells, increase caloric expenditure, which can prevent obesity. So they go on and talk about all these different mechanisms. Now, they go on to say regarding physical performance, the early time-restricted feeding plus exercise and the late time-restricted eating plus exercise group showed higher significant improvements in all tests compared to just the time-restricted eating group 
or the control group. Previous studies have established time-restricted eating as an effective intervention to improve body composition and overall health. The impact of timing of food intake in early versus late time-restricted eating on body composition has gained considerable interest in recent years. Few studies have compared the effects of early versus late time-restricted eating combination with physical exercise on body composition and health parameters. The existing literature presents mixed results mostly without notable differences, which aligns with our study. To our knowledge, this study is the first to examine combined effects of different time-restricted eating protocols during the day and physical activity on physical performance in overweight and obese women by evaluating the exercise capacity in various intervention groups and comparing them to a control group. Our results show that a 16-8 time-restricted eating regime followed for 12 weeks resulted in a significant improvement in the walking distance during the six-minute timed walk test in the early time-restricted feeding groups as well as the late time restricted eating groups. But as I mentioned, what I thought was even more interesting is the 30 second squat test, as well as um, the leg extension and crunch and vertical jump. There were actually more significant differences uh, between groups in the early time restricted feeding group compared to the late. Um, and so I think it's interesting. I, basically, there isn't that much of a difference when it comes to long-term weight loss, when it comes to metabolic health, do what works for you. But if you're not having good workouts, then I suggest, and you're fasting and exercising, I suggest trying to pivot and eat earlier in the day and make sure that you hit your workouts after you've had one or two major meals. You might notice that you have more exercise capacity, you have more strength, you have more stamina, which over time will lead to more favorable improvements in your body composition. So those are my thoughts. I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. I'm grateful that you tuned all the way to the very end. In conclusion, when you fast, if you also exercise, you're going to get more beneficial improvements in all aspects of fitness and possibly enhance fat mass loss over time. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.